today's adventure begins here as a recording of this Friday, May 6, 2022 at Cowgirls Espresso where I have picked up a piping hot caffeinated beverage. Very unique place in the shape of a coffee stand. Little did I know when I went through there that the baristas were wearing a lot of clothes. But that's a pretty neat look at it. It pulled me in because it looks like a coffee pot. Coffee pot. Welcome everyone, Adam and the Woo here. I tried to find Seattle's best coffee. Evidently, there is no brick and mortar Seattle's best, so I drove down here from where I was near the Seattle airport to a little town called Auburn, Washington. But I drove around to a few spots. I even went to a mall that said there was a Seattle's best. That's hot, that's very hot. So this is the option. That is a very tall cup of coffee. I got a lot on the agenda today. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? And speaking of someone else that doesn't really wear a whole heck of a lot of clothing, Bigfoot. This is one block away from the coffee place I was just, just went in. Bigfoot Java. Take a look at that. Now the mall that they said they were gonna have the Seattle's best coffee in, store wasn't in there anymore. And then I also read that a convenience store called Extra Mile used to carry the coffee. But I showed up to an Extra Mile and there weren't any of them. There wasn't any. They obviously pulled it from there too. I think the only place you can get that particular brand is at a grocery store, buying the K-Cups and the bags. Fail. I am now heading about 30 miles north of where I just was towards the Seattle Center to meet up with a friend who's gonna drive me around to some spots. That right there is the Space Needle. The real Space Needle, not the Gatlinburg Space Needle. Gatlinburg, Tennessee claims to have a Space Needle, which it really is called the Space Needle, but this, this is the one everyone knows about. The Seattle Space Needle. I'm gonna go up in that thing. Kind of obscured by the foliage there. Uh, that thing's tall. I've always seen this from afar, but never been up to the top. And I got some information in here all about the, the Space Needle. So I'm gonna be going up in this. This is the photo over there. There's Nixon, who was vice president at the time. Oh, he's on the monorail. Also, the monorail goes through Seattle as well. And there's Robert F. Kennedy with his futuristic car. And Elvis. Elvis Presley wooed co-star Joan O'Brien in a, in a movie filmed at the fair. In a movie filmed at the fair. Is it called at the fair? Or was it at a fair that they filmed it? It's confusing. Also, this is Danielle and Andrew, my so friends who live in the general vicinity. I can't believe you guys live within walking distance of this two place. Two blocks away. I can see 2% of the top of the Space Needle from Just 2%? Just the two. You've measured it exactly two percent. So, do you think the movie was called at the fair, or is it fair to say I, that I, there was just a movie that Elvis ate at the restaurant? I feel like if it was the movie name, it would be capitalized. Like, I think so yeah. too, or it'd be in quotations. Right here, it happened at the World's Fair. Is that what oh, that's, oh, that's it, it happened. It happened at the World's Fair. Good eye. Yeah. Oh wait. In the Needles restaurant was actually filmed at MGM Studios. Oh, we got tricked. Oh, this is pretty neat. In July of 1962, the cool, the, everyone that's cool calls it the Needle. The Needle. The Needle. All capitalized. It was featured in the first live TV broadcast that, that reached 20, 200 million viewers. That's a lot of viewers. And there's the gift shop down there. Oh, this is made out of Legos. That is a Lego top topper right there. <laughs> 41 seconds at the top. Ooh. You get the big view out of the window yeah. real fast. Get it out, you ready? Here we go. Only 41 Here we go. Oh, I see that. Welcome. Going up. Okay. 10 Seconds up to the 10 million feet. Yeah, that's right. Sounds about right. Space needles total height of 605 feet. 
That's 184 meters or 60 stories. Space Needle was built back in 1962. That is Elliot Bay right there. Elliot Bay is 600 feet deep. The Space Needle is 605 feet tall. So when you're on the glass floor looking down, it's just about that deep right there. And Google's got a great graphic on the too. Pretty deep. Well, you ready to jump? No. I think I was the only one on here that followed this rule. Oh, this is quite the view up here. Wow. Oh, I see the baseball stadium over there too. We they only recently, uh, they went through a renovation. This used to just be a gate of mesh, so you couldn't see a whole lot. A gate of mesh? Yeah, it's just a mesh fence. Yeah. Now it's just a, a horrifying... It was just so if ugly. There were, if there weren't drips of water on there, I would never even know there was a window. You're yeah. going to lean against it? Yeah, you can. You can Why? It that is, no. And it's at an angle, yeah. Oh my god, this is almost like the stuff they have at like SeaWorld, where the, sh the shark can't get through. Exactly. Oh, look at this. You can put your hands through. Yeah. <laughs> 605 feet in the air. Okay, this is yeah, it's pretty thick. 605 feet? That's what he said. That is, the city in the distance over there is Bellevue, Washington. It's across the lake. Oh, over there. Yeah, the one, it, there's a, a lake in between us with a floating bridge on it. Now, since you do live in this general vicinity, do they have an annual pass to this that you could buy if you ever just wanted to pop up here at any time? Yes, they do. Do you own it? I'm not intelligent enough to have bought one. You should buy one. <laughs> should buy one. You can, at any time, you can I, just I stroll should. over, go up here in the, on the Space Needle, lean up against the glass, terrify a tourist sure. that thinks... Easily. See, what if you were leaning here and you were so thin, you, were, you lost so much weight that you just kind of slithered through there? It's a long way down. How many feet was it? 605, is what he said. And which rivers, which, which lake is this? This is Elliott Bay. Elliott Bay. It out about, it goes about 200 miles in that direction and empties out of the Pacific Ocean. Here's your monorail track. California. Oh, is, California. Where's is the down monorail? Right down there. Oh. Do you see the track? Yeah. So if we stay here for a little bit, you'll see it. We're going to see the monorail? Yeah. Only one stop? Yep. Yeah. Westlake Center. One stop here, and then the other one is over in Westlake Center. <laughs> There goes. There's the wheel. I was over there. I was over there yesterday. Getting. Uh, you ever been to the first Starbucks? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I only waited 28 minutes. That's actually really good yeah. over there. It was raining and miserable, so that's why no one was standing there. 28 minutes. Only the most dedicated, caffeinated people want to be. Yep. Yeah. We're, talk, yeah. we're talking about sleep, sleepless in Seattle. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So like right when you go into the market, Rob Ryder and Tom Hanks were there, and oh. then they throw the fish and stuff, and the little kids there and everything. So yeah. and, and, like and if you visit the Athena restaurant inside of there, you can see the counter. Where it's at. I always think of the cable guy, and he goes, "Oh, she loves that movie." And he goes, "They all do. <laughs> they all do." Despite two dead. So those are some forced perspective spiders right there. Daddy long legs. <laughs> And then there's a fountain. This is where your arachnophobia kicks in. Oh, yeah. You can jump, maybe. And what cruise ships are there? some cruise ships over there? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, one of them's a celebrity. I think that X is a celebrity. What's the Globe? The Globe was the Seattle Post Intelligencer. It's a newspaper that was in that building and they've since gone out of business. But it used to look, almost looks like the Daily Planet. It does look very Daily yeah. Planet ish. This is really an incredible view up here. This will be one of those things, every time I come back through Seattle, I will go up here. Oh, absolutely. You gotta come. And I have a fondness for the Gatlinburg Space Needle, but this is a little bit more impressive, I have to, I have to admit. It might just be a little bit taller. I have to show... I, I, <laughs> I, I, I love Gatlinburg, but this is a whole other level. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I don't want to lean again. I know. <laughs> cool. That's perfect. You did it. <laughs> Oh, my. oh, you lean back. It's at an angle, you go, like, so you can just back. chill out. Oh, that's the whole, oh, that's actually you're scarier than what I was doing standing right there. You're doing it though. It's happening right now. We're really doing it, aren't we, buddy? Yeah, we are. Just do what? Just pretend like you're leaning up against metal. Then you feel better. And try not to look out of your peripheral vision. Well, even no matter what was behind me holding my back in place, mm -hmm. knowing that I'm this high up, why am I sitting here? 
Why? Because you can. Because I can? Because you're in Seattle. You gotta do that. You have to come up here. Rome. This is when in Seattle. This is when in Seattle. You have to sit on the glass bench and lean against the wall on the top floor of the space. And Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise. Tom Hanks? Well, Tom Cruise might have as well. Tom Hanks has been here. Tom yeah. Hanks has been here. Was there You'll a scene in Sleep Us in Seattle where the top of the Space Needle? I wish. I, I think, think it's so. the, the Empire State Building. That's oh no, it was the Empire State Building. That's not, the Empire State Building's not in Seattle. It's not. No. It's in the Empire State <laughs> Wait a second, I'm confused. Here we go, folks. Welcome back to the elevator, where you are currently looking north out across Queen Anne Hill, which is one Oh, look at that. The Seattle Center Monorail, also known as the Alweg. Alweg Monorail? Al Wegg. Was it a person? Al? Al? I think so. Mr. Wegg? Mr. Mr. Al Wegg himself. Al Wegg. The Al, Al Wegg. <laughs> and there is a monorail, monorail man. Look at this. Monorail man is down here, made out of machine parts. There's a vehicle detector right there. And this is monorail man. It almost kind of looks like a, a generic flux capacitor, it does. doesn't yeah. it? I was going to say, it's like almost the plutonium gauge. gauge kind of is and look down here his shin guards are traffic lights right there monorail man oh aka train us prime. Prime. prime i like that name a lot that's pretty cool <laughs> got myself a little souvenir here got a little little take home souvenir the original monorail the seattle center monorail the original all right i do not now, technically i am behind the yellow line i'm actually to the side of the yellow line but that's kind of, I think I'm, I think it's so I was expecting this thing to be pulling in a little quicker. Little Pepsi, train. Pepsi train arriving. The door is opening. Okay, thank you. Going in. Oh, closing up. I like the sleek design of this. The skylights are a nice touch. Oh, I really like this. See, this is a word I use a lot. Stanchions? Stanchions? Yeah, that's a real word, yeah. see? Stanchions. Stanchions. Yes. So this thing goes pretty fast when it's, when it's heading out. Pulling away from the station. This is not the contemporary. Stayed in the same spot. He's looking through the rearview mirrors. I see a Walt Disney World who cannot ride in front of the monorail. So this is kind of a this is a cool event. It's a first person view. Yeah. I think at Disneyland you can still ride in front. Yeah. I think at Disneyland you can. But not at WDW. Years ago, my sister was a child and was able to ride up in the front. Yeah. I've ridden in the front of the monorail at Disney World, but it's been a long time ago. We are moving. Because I remember that pretty hard. This thing's moving. How fast is this thing going? Oh, it says right there on the thing 35, 35 miles per hour. I know exactly what you're thinking right now. 88 miles per hour. <laughs> That's why we're friends. <laughs> Whoa, that sounds like that sounds like Star Trek. <laughs> that sounds like Star Trek. Engage. Oh, there's Elvis again right there. Look at that. There's Elvis again. Oh, that, that's the top of the space. Is that the, is that the top of the space needle again? This building is gargantuan. They have concerts in here. There is a, a icy peaks of this mountain right here. Look at this. It's as tall as the Matterhorn. It's almost. Ma We're just throwing a lot of Disney little like. Uh, oh, there's a tent down here. Oh, there's a rabbit. Or is that a, what is that down there hiding in the cave? It does look like a giant rabbit. It must be a wolf. He's a big jackrabbit. I think that's a rabbit. Or a jackalope. Oh, jack jackalope. Yep. Dave, Dave Collier would be proud. I should also mention that Andrew owns a DeLorean time machine. Yes, he does. Oh, there you go. man, that's awesome. Oh, that's this one so, tells you where we're going. This, this one, one tells, tells you where you are. This one tells you where we were. So you want to see the signing of the Declaration of Independence? The witness of the Christ! Here's a red letter date in the history of science. November 5th, 1955. <laughs> 
Yes, of course. <laughs> November 5th, 1955. Well, what? I don't get it. <laughs> that is so awesome. Now, you took me in a ride in your car like a decade sure ago. Did. I did came up here. We did a daily woo video together. That's true. Was, we did an unedited one. I think it was 242, 248, somewhere in that range. Is where oh, you even remember the number. Oh, yeah. It was definitely in the 240s. I was in a band and we, we played a show and you came out to the show and then That's right. drove me around. Remember the name of the venue I played at? Cor El Corazon? Does that sound yeah, right? Yeah, that does yeah. sound familiar. Yeah. 2012 ish. Believe it or not, that place is uh, closing up and moving on. Now, last time, did you? You didn't have the time circus, did you? I did not have the time circus. I didn't have the uh, the TFC drive handle. I didn't have the overhead array. I, I had a different flux capacitor, and I didn't have the status indicator. Display. And your plutonium chamber too, right? Now, Danielle likes to call this time machine light edition because I don't have any of the exterior stuff yet, and I'm still Just building the interior. inside. I'm still working on parts on the inside. We'll get there. And you drove this one time down to Southern California. I sure did. We a couple did our, times. We did our video out Twin at Twin Pines, Pines Mall. Mall in uh, uh, 2019. That's right. Olivia's drive, huh? Mm -hmm. This is awesome. So is this your daily driver? Yes. You drive this to work? I drive it to work. To Signed by work. Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd and Mr. Tom Wilson. It drives with me to work. Yeah. Pretty so if your boss ever says, how come you didn't get that done? You say, if only I had more time, yeah. that's just not an excuse. That's right. You go back in time and get more time. With your supervisor. You sure can. <laughs> it's good to see you again. Time machine DeLorean. Huh. Hey, you don't have a time machine out though. It's just. No, I got to get all of this. That would be pricey. Oh, 30000 at least. Yeah. I think to bit. get started in, I would need some good help for it because I'm not a machinist. I don't know how to do a lot of that stuff. Because when you run, when it runs out of plutonium, Oh, no way. Is this the bridge the troll's under? Where's the troll park? A guy jump, jumped the traffic circle once? That traffic circle we just went past? Imagine living in a house directly across from the troll that lives under the bridge. The troll would be your neighbor. This is known as the Fremont Troll. Designed and built by Stephen Badenas, Will Martin, Donna Walter, and Ross Whitehead with help from the community. Has all the information there. The hands. Look at the troll's paws right there. The troll under the bridge. That's awesome. The troll has one eye. The other eye is covered, covered, covered by like a, a Davy Havoc emo haircut. Yes. It's very Seattle. It fits in. Oh, yeah. They were thinking ahead. Yeah. Troll scaling Scaling the troll. He's done it. It's the woo and the troll. <laughs> Focus eye open. <again. laughs> <laughs> yeah. He did it. He scaled the troll successfully. Just gotta dismount the troll. Yeah. There you go. Now, this is interesting. It's kind of silhouetted out here because it's shadowed out from underneath the bridge. The road is called Troll Avenue. Troll got its own road. It's got a beard, it's got the hair, and then it's got a beard. And he's picking up a VW Beetle. Whoa, I never noticed that. He's got a car, a classic car alert right here. Wow. I never ever noticed that before. 
Look at the tires. That's like real tires down underneath that. That's the real tire. I wonder if it's a real, if it is a real tire. I think it is a real VW. Yeah, look at this. Look at the, look at the little hinge there on the door. Oh, that's, that's wild. That's awesome. This is like this creature underneath the bridge almost. Because, yeah, taking, it's like Cadillac Ranch to a whole other level. <laughs> Look underneath the nostril. I kind of I peeked up underneath there. That's a, that's an area you do not want to look be looking into. No. Took a little commute, about a mile or so. You can see downtown over there. Yeah. And this neighborhood was filming locations of the Henderson home from Harry and the Hendersons, in 1987. Now this is not the street number that was in the movie change the street number but it is the same house in fact they still have that very unique rock formations down here below on the side of the sidewalk there very distinct looking house and this tree over here that's out front as well Harry and the Henderson's John Lithgow Donna Michi pretty awesome I just want to swing by this real quick it's kind of in the same area as the troll and this is what it looked like in the movie. And with the classic car over there, the 80s car in the driveway. And that's the Harry and the Henderson's house. Now this was a movie I used to watch a heck of a lot when I was younger. Harry and the Hendersons, a movie about Bigfoot that li goes, lives in the house. Does it get much better than that? And it's an 80s movie, I love the 80s. Now both of you really enjoy movies. Sure do. What are some of the other filming locations around here that I should add in? Okay. Lots of stuff over there. So Say Anything was not LA, it was here? Uh, a mix of both. So a little bit Seattle, a little bit um, LA too, yeah. The end is in Los Angeles. Yeah, the end that we pick the radio up and all that. That's right. And also Sleepless in Seattle, of course. Of course. It's Naturally. Central Seattle. And Harry and the Hendersons. Harry and the Hendersons. It's a classic. If you haven't seen it, go watch it right now. I have seen it. I know you You didn't think it. I've seen it? I've seen it. I know you've seen, seen it. it. I'm talking to these people. Uh, <laughs> this is a very unique looking tree yeah what were you gonna say i say how much you think this costs this tree this tree is at least four grand yeah yeah oh, you mean the house, house. you mean the yes, house the tree yeah. do you think that tree. really you think harry and the henderson's really upsell the resale value on this oh easily i would guess so. you think so yeah Maybe. how many people do you think go, it's a cold cruise by here it's sort of a cult film i have to imagine at least it. maybe 20 20 people a day or so maybe it's not like our back to the because the troll had a steady flow of people. That's people. right. I would say more people go to the troll than the Harry and the Henderson's house. I would agree I with that. Fair. And you're allowed to climb all over the troll? Do not go on their property and climb around the... Don't go rooting around in that tree like George McFly. They take beautiful... Keeping they, calm they really George McFly them. would have a field day in this tree. Look at this. He wouldn't even know which one of these limbs to choose. Lots of windows. <laughs> That's a lot. I have, look at this tree. As we're pulling out of here, this car, this park next to us, has the villains from Superman 2 when they're encased in, cl in, in glass. They're in, right in encased in glass. <laughs> from Superman 2, right there. Because that's it's on a glass window, that sticker. Is it Superman 2? No, it's Queen! <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> All right, now I'm back in my car, heading over to the game downtown. First pitch is at 6.40, it's 6.10. By the time I get to my seat, it's gonna be almost game time. Also, parking today was $40. Last night, which was on a Thursday, was $30. Parking goes up $10 on a Friday. Got some pretty good seats. First, first row here, right across the Rays dugout.
counts on the fourth. Oh, no way. God, oh, my gosh. That was almost a home run. going to do it for today the Rays have won five in a row pretty good ending to a, a fun day a very fun day a very full day stayed very busy today the Rays win five in a row and I am ending the evening with watching the team I'm rooting for win I came back at the very end freaking awesome the perfect the perfect baseball game to watch good seats and a win. We'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.